As a lot of people know, I generally like to let the emotions of the finish of the season wear off before I start to make decisions on how I feel about the season, reflect on the season or whatever. I mean, you are going to have my live post during the game where I do just emphasize my emotions in that time. But as far as like reflecting on the season, I like to wait a little bit. And now that I've waited a few days, I think I can finally say that I have come to the conclusion, and this is not out of emotion, that it is time for Wisconsin basketball to move on from Greg Gard. And I've got some numbers written down here in this notebook that are going to tell you why. So the biggest lie, in my opinion, that Wisconsin basketball fans tell themselves is that Greg Gard has continued the success that Bo Ryan had. And that's just not true. And they really do tell themselves that too. They're like, well, Bo was competitive every year. Gard is competitive every year. But here's something. Bo Ryan was the head coach at Wisconsin for 14 and a half years. I'm going to say 14 and a half because he retired halfway through the last season to give way to Guard to get the job. Bo Ryan in 14 seasons lost double-digit games five times. Greg Guard has been the head coach at Wisconsin for nine seasons, if you count the one that he took over for Bo. So let's say eight full seasons. Eight full seasons of Greg Guard. Wisconsin basketball has lost double-digit games seven times. It is not even close to what Bo Ryan had. Not even close. So please stop telling me that. Now let's go NCAA tournaments. Bo Ryan, 14 seasons. Never missed the NCAA tournament one time. Greg Gard, missed the tournament twice. Missed the tournament last season. And honestly, if they didn't start so well this season, would have missed the tournament again because they floundered down the stretch. Now, let's go to how they perform in the conference. Bo Ryan, 14 seasons. Finished in the top four of the conference every single year. Greg Gard, outside of the top four on four separate occasions, including the last two seasons. And now, let's go into this weekend. James Madison plays Wisconsin on Friday night and kicks the beep out of them. Wisconsin only loses by 11, but James Madison probably won that game by like 25 points. I mean, really, just the way, the way it went, you would have thought they won by about 25 points. You knew Wisconsin was never going to win that game. And then James Madison plays Duke on Sunday. Duke beat James Madison by 38 points. That is a 49-point swing from an 11-point loss to Wisconsin. And I've heard the fans, I've heard the fans, I've read it. Oh, well, the officials in the Wisconsin game were so bad. Wisconsin would have lost good officiating, bad officiating. Wisconsin played like garbage. And then I've also heard, well, well, Duke's a better matchup for James Madison than Wisconsin was. A matchup does not make a 49-point difference in college basketball. Don't give me that crap. Stop looking for excuses. This falls on Greg Gard. If you watch the game against James Madison, how in the world are you going to tell me that that does not fall on Greg Gard? And I've seen... I've got the replies on my post because I had a post where a lot of people liked it. A lot of people liked my post. And it was, this has to be the final straw for Greg Gard. And if you're still supporting Greg Gard, you flat out do not know or understand basketball. That is the exact thing that I said. And it has to be the final straw because how in the world are you watching that and not thinking it's Gard's fault? And people were replying. They were like, Oh, Lucas, Guard didn't go out there and miss all the shots. Guard didn't go out there and turn the ball over. Guard isn't the one that didn't come ready to play. Who in the world do these people think is responsible for getting his team prepared for James Madison? Is it the player's responsibility to get the team prepared? I have never heard anybody say it's the player's responsibility. It's always the coach who is supposed to be prepared, have the team ready for what James Madison is going to do. And Chucky Hepburn said that after the game. He said, they shocked us early on. They were shocked 
How in the world can you be shocked? You you know you're playing in the NCAA tournament. That part I will say is on the players. They should not be shocked that a team in the NCAA tournament is good. That's unacceptable for, for, for everybody. But really, a lot of this blame needs to fall on Greg Gard. And please stop deflecting the blame from Greg Gard. This is a rant that you absolutely need to hear. It is Greg Gard's fault. And I know you're going to say it's unfair for me to compare him to Bo Ryan, but that's exactly what you do. You say, oh, Bo's teams lost early in the tournament. So if Gard's teams are losing early in the tournament, it's not the problem. I mean, my good. The difference between Bo Ryan's teams and Greg Gard's teams is when Bo Ryan lost early in the tournament, you were surprised that it happened. And when Greg Gard loses early in the tournament, you are not surprised that it happened. You expect it to happen. How many people do you know pick James Madison to upset Wisconsin? Because I'm certain that all of us know a lot. And it sounds like I'm asking Greg Gard to be Bo Ryan. I am not asking Greg Gard to be or Bo Ryan. I am asking the fans to understand that Greg Gard is not Bo Ryan. Because for some reason they think that he is. Greg Gard is not Bo Ryan. And I just listed off all the stats. And if you watch the James Madison game, really it should tell you that too. And really at the end I just want to make note. I understand what Greg Gard has accomplished at Wisconsin. I do. And I was always on Team Greg Gard until last season. Last season is when I started to join the Fire Guard guys. I was Team Greg Gard when Kobe King transferred in 1920, 2019-2020 season. When Kobe King transferred and everyone was calling for Greg Gard to get fired, I defended Greg Gard when almost everybody seemed to be turning on him. And Wisconsin was 13-10 and 10 that season. They won eight games in a row, won the Big Ten, and then the tournament got canceled. I defended Greg Gard then. But after watching what I have watched the last couple of seasons, I can no longer defend Greg Gard. The lack of execution, or the lack of preparation, I should say. The lack of preparation going into a tournament game against James Madison. You missed the tournament last season. And Connor Asijin, who set your school record as a freshman. Connor Asijin last season as a freshman set the school record for made threes in a season. He is now transferring because Greg Gard gave him seven minutes a game his sophomore season. And say whatever you want about Connor Asijin and the defense not being good enough, because I've heard that too, and I've read that too. Wisconsin this season was not the same defensively as they usually are. So he would have fit right in if you put him in there. I don't care about his defense, because it's not like anybody else other than Chucky was playing defense anyway. Stop making up lies, stop making excuses, and realize that the issue in here is the freaking stooge we got standing on the sideline. You know, I'm sorry for getting so upset, but it, but it's hard not to be upset. Because so many people are out here defending Greg Gard these last few days, and it's just ridiculous, seriously. We're a program that was so close to winning the national championship in 2015, and now we're okay with losing in the first round. Would we have been okay in 2015 if that team lost in the first round? In 2014, if that team had lost in the first round? Those teams were final four teams. And of course, as Wisconsin fans, you're not going to consistently make the final four. I understand that. But consistently making the Sweet 16, that should be a part of our expectations. And we have not done that since Greg Gard's second season here which happened to have players from the scraps of Bo Ryan's Final Four teams. Greg Gard with his own players, never been to the Sweet 16. We need to get a coach in here that is going to fix this. And then you also have the state's top players who don't want to come here. Tyler Hero posted a few years ago that players don't want to play in that system. I don't know how true that is. Maybe it's a Tyler Hero personal preference. But the system plays a role in recruits not wanting to sign. And, and that's just the truth, whether you want to admit it or not. You don't have to necessarily change the system, 
but you have to show that the system can be successful if you're not going to change it because you can't keep losing out on Tyler Hero and all these other there's so many examples but I'm just going to primarily pick Tyler Hero because he was initially committed to Wisconsin and then decided to go somewhere else you have to show these players that they can be successful at this university and right now they are not impressed by guard or the job that he does the guy has got no energy he's on the sideline and during the game we had an interview with whoever the sideline reporter was i forgot now and he said all right maybe i need to talk to the officials more greg guard he's never going to talk to the officials and if he does, he's going to talk to the officials. He's not going to yell at the officials. I've never seen Greg Gard get a technical foul. I know he has one in his nine seasons. He has one technical foul. But and I'm not asking you to I'm not asking you to be Fran McCaffrey and blow up every 15 minutes. I'm not asking you to do that. But you have to stand up for your players at some point. And they won't respond every time, but there will be times where they will see that and they will know that their coach cares and they will respond. There are just so many things I don't like about Greg Gard, and I, I'm tired of it. And I've gone back and forth on this fire guard, whatever. The last couple of seasons, the last two seasons that I've been on the fire guard train, and I'm tired of going back and forth. I'm staying here. Wisconsin basketball has to fire Greg Gard. And if you don't want to admit it, then that's okay. But expect mediocre results like we continue to get. Anyway, um, I'll probably make some Brewers videos this season like I did last season. I'm going to try and do that more often because I did stop last year and I, I want to keep going this time. But uh, Hope everybody enjoys their week, um, continues watching March Madness, and I hope your brackets are doing well, and go Badgers.